Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at Shuriken. This right here is a enhancement and modification package for macOS 10.4 Tiger and it was created by the same person behind Sorbet Leopard which I did a video on here if you missed it. That was a modified version of macOS 10.5 Leopard and much like Sorbet Leopard, Shuriken has a focus on optimizing and improving performance on Macs running 10.4 Tiger and it also includes the option to visually modify the operating system by installing a handful of themes. Where it differs from Sorbet Leopard though is that all of these modifications have to be installed on top of an existing install of Mac OS X Tiger. So you don't have to create a separate partition on your hard drive and restore an entire disk image to it, which is really nice. So when you download it, I'll have the link down below. It's hosted on Macintosh Garden and it comes in a zip file. When you extract it, you've got three folders here, updates, optimizations, and tools. Now off camera, I already went ahead and installed these updates. These are just various Apple, uh, most of these are official. There is this one unofficial update down here, or that's a you know third-party package, but most of these are directly from Apple. You even have macOS 10.4.11, which I already had installed on here. Uh, just to give you the spec sheet here, this is an iMac G3 with a 450 megahertz G3, 512 megabytes of RAM, and yes, we're running 10.4.11. So you could just go in here. If you didn't have this update installed, you could just download it right from here, uh, either the Intel or the PowerPC version, depending on which machine that you're installing this on and all this stuff has been mirrored on Macintosh Garden so you can see this here is a Macintosh Garden link if I was online we'd be able to download that but yeah so you've got QuickTime you've got a security update pack you've got Java updates Safari iTunes we've got a the newer version of iTunes here, you can see I just launched it here and the icon changed because I hadn't actually launched this since I updated it. But this right here is iTunes, I believe 8 point, uh, let's go in here, I got 8.2.1, which is the latest uh, version that can run on G3 Max. So yeah, it just consolidates everything into a nice uh, organized folder. You can go through one by one. And yeah, we're not going to actually get into iTunes right now because, you know, it's iTunes. I'm sure if you've used the Mac, you've, you've probably used iTunes before. Where stuff gets exciting is under the optimizations and uh, this tools folder right here. And if you saw my Sorbet Leopard video, a lot of this stuff will look familiar because there are some of the same options in here as there were in Sorbet Leopard. So you've got Quartz Compositor, you can enable or disable Beam Sync, you've got the Spotlight options if you want to completely disable Spotlight, which is useful for saving system resources because uh, you don't have Spotlight indexing in the background, so we can just turn that off. But yeah, definitely a lot of useful kind of under the hood improvements in here. Uh, but I'm sure most of you guys are interested in the visual stuff. So if you go under Tools here, this is where the Appearance folder is. And you've got three different themes that you can install. You've got the pinstripes, the platinum theme, which this is actually only going to apply to the icons. And you have the Sierra theme. Yes, that's right. There is actually a Sierra theme for uh, Mac OS X Tiger, which we'll take a look in a moment. So brushed metal is the system default OS X theme variant. But the pinstripe system theme was used on earlier versions of OS X. So we can enable this here just by running this terminal command. And it will ask us for our password. Uh, we'll do yes and then enter our super secure password here. And it will uh, restart Finder and we'll get that kind of classic or, or classic or uh, Mac OS X theme. Oh, actually, we have to, it just logs out of our session completely. So we got to log back in. It does change the desktop wallpaper for you as well. And now, check it out. So it looks like we're running Mac OS X Puma or one of those earlier versions. It's even modified about this Mac and replaced the Apple logo with the OS X logo. Of course, it does keep the version number the same, which is great, though there is an option to change this to 10.4.12 which officially does not exist, but much like with Sorbet Leopard, it's kind of just a bit of a, like, oh, look, it's the final version of OS X because we've added all these modifications and stuff to it. So, yeah, that's that's what you got going on there. So, yeah, pinstriping theme, uh, super neat. And we'll go back into here. we got to get out of this and go in here again. Tools, appearance. Now, Platinum. This here is only going to take effect on the icons. This is not like a system-wide Mac OS 9 theme, as cool as that would be. It does change the wallpaper again. And, and yeah, check it out. I mean, on the desktop here, the Macintosh HD icon has been changed. And yeah, throughout Finder here, you've got a whole new set of icons all across the board, which I think is 
pretty cool. I mean, this kind of makes it feel like this is some beta version of Mac OS X, uh, where they hadn't developed all the icons yet. And the cool thing about all this stuff is it is reversible, uh, and that was one of the downsides in Sorbet Leopard with the High Sierra theme that was included in that. Once you applied that, you couldn't just uninstall it and just revert back to the way the system looked before. Not the case here. The Sierra theme is reversible, and this, of course, is a third-party thing. There is this README text document in which it tells you to read first, so we will read through it here and it tells you you know what it is it's completely free don't pay for this blah 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 and it tells you all right close all applications double click install you have the choice of whether to replace your uh oh yeah the font so it, it will replace the font here this default font with the san francisco font and then uninstalling it is pretty much the same thing you just have to double click on the uninstall.command file here so let's run install.command and if I haven't already mentioned it, I've not taken a look at this yet, so I'm super excited to see how this transforms the system. So we'll say yes. And here's where it asks you if you want to install the San Francisco font. We'll say yes. Ooh, check this out. So it takes effect on the login screen as well. So the Apple logo gets changed around. Mac OS Tiger. So they're going with the modern Mac OS naming style there. And the uh, icons here get changed too. And your user profile, that's not the one that I selected. All right, so it did modify the icons, but I noticed that there was, if we go back into here, there was this icon theme folder, which is highlighted in red, and it's probably to, you know, get your attention. And this is mentioned in the text document here. If you scroll down after installation to installing icons, it tells a little bit about it here. So we're going to go into this folder, and we've got two iContainer files and, of course, candy bars in here. So we're just going to open up the applications one first. Yep, so there's all the icons there, and we'll just apply application icons. And we got to relaunch the dock. Okay, we should see... Um, oh, you know what? There's, I guess most of these are in the, uh, the the system pack here. But let's go to applications. And yeah, most of these have been changed. So here's a new calculator icon, calendar, iChat has the messages icon. Uh, you've got mail. or I think, yeah, that's the original mail icon. That one hasn't been changed. So there are some that have yet to be changed. But if we go uh, back here... Let's open up the system one and let's see what icons these are. Yeah, here's the folder icons. There's finder, dashboard, all the device icons. Yeah, so we're going to apply this. Oh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. So, yeah, not every single icon gets changed. So, like, system preferences is still the same. QuickTime player hasn't been changed. Uh, but there's a decent amount of them that have. Uh, dashboard has the launch pad icon. You've got uh, Finder here. It's definitely really cool. And once we apply the wallpapers, which if we go back into the Shuriken folder here, there is, or there are, I should say, some wallpapers. Boom, look at that. Doesn't that look, that looks really good. I gotta say, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I'm curious if about this Mac gets modified. Yes, it does. So we've got the wider, about this Mac window here. Of course, there aren't any tabs or anything, but yeah, the you know newer system font there, Mac OS Tiger version 10.4.11. Yeah, your processor, memory information, all that good stuff. It's all there. So yeah, definitely a really nice attempt at recreating Mac OS Sierra. And it's nice that everything is uh, just user reversible too. Also in the tools, you've got some dashboard uh, stuff, which is just quitting dashboard if you don't want it running. You've got some demos, uh, similar to what we had in Sorbet Leopard. You've got some dock modifications. We actually had this exact stuff in Sorbet Leopard too. You could change the appearance to use the suck minimization effect. So just to give you a little recap on what that looks like. So this is the genie one. And the suck one is kind of similar to Genie, but it is a little bit different, as you can see. And it's a nice sort of hidden macOS dock minimization effect that you can't enable from system preferences. And you can also do the thing where you only have active applications showing in the dock, which I personally don't like at all, but it's a it's an option here if you don't really use the dock uh, other than just to see what programs you have running on your computer. Finder, you've got that expose blob and you've got hidden files as well. Again, not stuff like exclusive to this pack. These are all just scripts that make this stuff a lot easier for the user to do. Instead of having to type out a terminal command to enable hidden files, you can just double click on this dot command file and it will do that for you, which is uh, super nice. So there we go. Now we can see hidden files in Finder. But yeah, so that that's the finder stuff here. You've got some maintenance scripts as well. You've got some memory stuff. You can disable safe sleep. You can release inactive memory if you want. And we also have RAM disk stuff uh, as well as quartz 
compositor, but speaking of memory, we'll touch on the uh, RAM disks here. This was a really nice addition to Sorbet Leopard that I wasn't really expecting, but yeah, you can just create a, you know, a one gigabyte RAM, actually, well, we can't because we don't have, <laughs> we don't have one gigabyte of RAM in this computer, but let's do a 64 megabyte RAM disk, so we can open this up, and it will create, uh, just on the fly right here, a uh, little RAM disk for us to, to use. So there it is, it mounts it on the system and everything, and boom, there you go, pretty cool. And Quartz Compositor, uh, this is very useful for improving system performance because you can turn off window shadows, and uh, you can just restart the display server as well right from here. So we'll toggle window shadows, which will uh, not make the system have to render those window shadows, so it will uh, improve performance a little bit for you. And last but not least, one of the really cool additions to Shuriken is the App Store. Just like Sorbet Leopard, this does add an App Store, or a sort of App Store, because it's really just a website. So it has this link under Applications. It'll just take you to a website in Safari here. And just so you know, for this to be installed, Installed, you have to uh, run through a script under updates, under finishing touches. It's this quality of life improvement uh, dot command file right here that will add this shortcut to applications and it will do a few other uh, things as well. But yeah, so this is it. And it's also a portal as well that gives you just links to a bunch of uh, retro computer related sites like search engines here. You've got a link to frog find. Uh, I can just go back there. You've got a uh, snapshot of Apple's uh, Mac OS X web page from back in 2005. Looks like April 28th, 2005. Uh, we'll hit OK there to allow that. Man, yeah, so here it is. But of course, you've got a selection of applications and it's split up into different categories up here. So we can go to productivity. We've got iWork. We've got Microsoft Office. We've got Xcode. Of course, there's all going to be older versions of this stuff that actually runs on Tiger. So maybe I want to download. Oh, and you've got Adobe Creative Suite 2 as well, uh, which all this stuff is hosted on Macintosh Gardener, or at least most of it is. Under multimedia, we've got VLC, of course, Audacity, very, very useful stuff. You've got Final Cut Express HD, Logic Express 7. You got iLife 06 up here on this banner. So you've got kind of like a featured application on each of these pages. So for games, you've got uh, Tron 2.0, You've got like an Apple style tagline here for each of these. Your life digitized which might actually be a real Apple uh, tagline that they used for iLife. So you got a bunch of games here. Bejeweled 2, you got Minecraft, you've got what well, looks like some emulators down here. Utilities, Flux, definitely very useful. I use that uh, on my main computer every single day. And yeah, just a wide selection of stuff here. And internet, you've got a couple web browsers, you've got Flash, you've got some torrent clients. And yeah, just a, a really useful uh, thing to go through and just, again, it really consolidates, just like this pack does with all the updates and improvements. This here consolidates a, a wide selection of applications that you would want to use on an old Mac running Mac OS X Tiger. Yeah, it's, it's definitely just a really nice, complete package of a bunch of system modifications and tweaks and some uh, appearance stuff as well, which I think is, is really neat. Definitely this uh, Mac OS X Sierra theme. Uh, I, I think this is really cool, and uh, you might not be able to fool somebody into thinking you're running Sierra on here, but maybe, maybe, you never know, but... Uh Either way, that's going to wrap it up for this little brief demonstration of Shuriken, or Mac OS X Shuriken, whatever you want to say. Again, I will have the link down below to this pack. It is completely free. Be sure to check it out. And uh, yeah, that's, that's going to wrap it up, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.